Tanuta, who is the Senior uh, Vice President of Sustainability at Ecolab. And welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So I know that you guys have really been a leader in thinking about water in a new way, really the overlap of water and circularity. Here we are at a conference that focuses a little bit more on sustainability as though sure. those two things were separate. But could you talk a little bit about the nexus between water, circularity, and sustainability? Sure. So in many ways, uh, when you think of uh, water, it's one of the most renewable resources we have. And so it, you know, unfortunately, we see that water is actually treated in many ways in a linear way and as a liability when it should be really thought of as an asset. And so part of this is us really wanting to hone in on how we drive people to think about water as a precious resource, which by 2030 will be a deficit of 40%, uh, which, is, which is scary. It's a ten, 10 years away. And so we need to really start to drive more circular practices in terms of not only conservation, which is foundational, but really thinking about reuse and recycle, namely because less than 3% of the wastewater in this world that is generated is reused and reclaimed back. And that's, that's a problem, especially with that 40% gap by 2030. We gotta go beyond conservation to really drive circular practices if we're gonna stave off that, that water shortage by 2030. So how do you do that? How do you get companies to start well, thinking think, about this? I think it starts with the fact that technology and innovation plays a, a really key role. One is that um, we have technology today that is on the shelf that can help us really drive the what, we, what I would call the 5 to 20 percent water conservation that we need. Then we need to move to then this what I call digital transformation because in many ways digital is a way for us to really reduce the variability of water as it comes in, especially when you think of, you know, gray water, the wastewater that we need to reuse, which right now is being discarded and not used again. So digital sensors are available and will continue to get better at being able to identify ways to really optimize water use and really avoid disruption and increase reliability. So I think I think technology and innovation in, in this digital transformation, Industry 4.0 is going to be a big key to how we get there. So many of the things you were just discussing require collaboration between the public sector and the private sector, right? So companies, in order to get to their goals that right. you're describing, right. especially at the local level, have to really be engaged. How can you uh, help with that collaboration? How are you helping bridge that gap? Well, I mean, I think there's a... First of all, we're not doing clearly enough of it, and you're right, it is a, a big gap because water in, in the end is a shared resource. You know, multiple people are dependent on it, it's very localized. And so I think the, the, the key is collective action. And so, you know, organizations like the Alliance for Water Stewardship have really been driving standards to really help uh, industry and water users in watersheds really drive not only how we need to think of water within our fence line, but really the collaboration outside the fence line. And that requires really this collective action with engaging with stakeholders, not just on um, you know, projects that lead to nature-based solutions, but other things that really allow us to really think of water as that resource that we need for years to come. So what do you want, what should industry be doing to be better stewards of water? What's, what are the first steps industry should be taking to address water usage? Well, I, th I think the very first step is, again, I think circular water and being able to move from linear to circular is going to be that first step. And identifying water as a dependency that you have, and I think that, that is a big, that's a, that's a big self-awareness that has to happen in an industry. Um, number two, it, water is undervalued. And so it's my point earlier about liability. It, it really, you know, it, it doesn't have to be viewed that way. The, if you think of water as the full value of really what it's doing for your business, you'll obviously think of it as an asset and begin to invest in it as opposed to the way it's treated today. I think uh, the other is regulatory. I think uh, regulations continue to become more stringent. And obviously that's going to be a factor in this discussion on water in the future. And then lastly, I would say reputational risk. I think a lot of the multinational companies that we work with 
um, are really thinking about water in, in, in a way that drives more stewardship because they realize that their brand is associated with the way they manage water because of some of those, some of those challenges that we're reading about, especially in places like Day Zeros, where you're seeing that, like in Cape Town or Chennai, India, and, and other places. Yeah. Well, Emilio, thank you for the work you do. Uh, we will be right back with another interview right after this commercial break. Mm -hmm. 